Um, Black Landsman is the new film from Spike Lee, and I would call it um, very much a drama. It's it's yeah. quite racially charged um, about a, a cop, uh, the first black cop in the Colorado Springs um, police force, yep. who decides to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan, um, and the events that unfold in them. Um, getting to the heart of, of the clan and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, starring uh, John David Washington and mm-hmm. uh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver, by the way, very underrated. He is fantastic. I mean, you may know him as Kylo Ren from Star Wars. Yes. Um, but it's probably the only place, really, that you do know him from. But he is fantastic in this film. Yes, and it also stars... Um, the guy who plays Eric from that 70s show. Did you ever remember that? I've No, I think that was a little bit before my time. I've not watched that. Topher Grace is his name. He plays um, David Duke. And also, did you notice that little cameo from Alec Baldwin at the start of the I film? I did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting him to be quite a big part, but he's just in the first scene and that's it. Obviously, uh, we've got a clip to play from the film, but before we go on, obviously the, the content in Black Landsman is fairly sensitive. Yeah. Um, if you are of a you know, certain... Uh, disposition you don't really want to listen to our review um, or it just affects you a bit uh, maybe skip the next sort of five ten minutes of chat yeah yeah um, but this from the film is one of the key speeches that Topher Grace makes as David Duke um, to a group of his uh, fellow clansmen today we are privileged to be among white men and white women <laughs> such as yourselves real warriors for the real America, the America that our ancestors fought and died for. The true white American race, the backbone from whence came our great Southern heritage. And I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you so much for never putting your country second. America first. America first. America first. Now, don't you find that that's that's quite a especially when you watch it on screen it's quite a shocking scene not necessarily because anything visceral or or violent happens but just because of how we kind of stirs up the crowd yeah and david duke in the film i find is given fairly non-discreet um similarities to donald trump yeah, I mean, a lot of what he says mirrors what Donald Trump has been in the media recently for saying. Yes. So, and and that was obviously very deliberate. Yes, and I I remember one particular line from the film where he says about um, giving America its greatness back. Yeah. And that that was so so clearly yeah. taken from a you know Trump's famous phrase. Yeah. Um, and I think Spike Lee was, I, I think actually this is why. Um, period films work that deal with these kind of issues because they take something that happens in this case sort of 34 years ago mm. and they're just taking they're using the themes that are, that, are, that are poignant today and just kind of displacing them to events that happened you know some time ago so you, you still feel the same as if it's happening now because yeah. the themes are still there it makes it a lot more relatable doesn't it to, yeah. to an audience that uh, I mean, these are still issues, obviously, what, what what happened in the film. It's still issues that are ongoing today, but maybe not in such a wide manner uh, as back then, obviously. Yeah. But it, it makes it more relatable, you know, to people that are very fortunate enough not to have to deal with this. You can you can see exactly what happened. It, it was good. Yeah. yeah. And I thought we both sort of came at the cinema thinking that it was maybe a bit slow. Yeah. It, and at two hours 15... It feels like they could have shortened it a little bit. Yeah, I think it was far too long and yeah. it would have been more effective with the points they were trying to make if it was shorter. They they dragged it out and it was a bit unnecessary. Yeah, there were certain scenes that just felt like they were there because um, Spike Lee really wanted them in there as yeah. opposed to them having much um, narrative purpose. Yeah. That said, though, um, I might be saying something a little bit controversial here, but I think Spike Lee should have just made a documentary. Yeah, I I feel like he wanted to be so historically accurate yeah. that he didn't have much creative license with the film. And if you're trying to make a big, you know, Hollywood film, then you you kind of need to bend the truth a little bit. 
Yeah. So he probably would have been better off doing a documentary. Yeah, because there's a, there's a certain part of the film where it goes into actual documentary footage. Which is the most effective bit of the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, and you're just sitting there in shock yeah. uh, once, once you've seen that. And you kind of think, why bother making a fiction mm. when he could have just done a documentary and it would have been so powerful? Yeah. That said... I also, what I really like about this film is that Spike Lee has taken conventions and a a filmmaking style that is very much um, a a product of of his culture and his background as a black American. Mm -hmm. And this style, which has become very synonymous with, you know, black exploitation, which was the term coined like years ago, and quite a, a derogatory subgenre of cinema, and he's taken all those conventions, made a black film with black actors mm. in a very um, African American style, and made it very good. Like <laughs> uh, in the sense of like me as a thirty-something white male mm. went to see that film wanted to see that film and actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong in us saying that we grow up with a certain type of film and expecting certain conventions and certain things yeah. to be done on screen. So when Spike Lee's films are released, generally I don't enjoy them as much as I did this because it's not the sort of filmmaking I'm used to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. And what I really like about Black Klansman is that it does kind of transcend that barrier. Yeah, and it, it makes the point very well, not just in what it's doing on screen, but how it's being made off screen and, and, and that it's still able to appeal to, to people like us. Yeah. Um, so overall, I would say it gets a thumbs up, but it was a bit slow. Yeah, I, th- I think I enjoyed it and it did what Spike wanted it to do, um, but I probably wouldn't watch it again. Yeah, see, I, I probably would. I'd have to be in the right mood. Yeah. It was just, it was too long for me to want to watch again. To want to watch it sit through two hours, 15 minutes of a film, I have to be really, really invested. Yeah. And I don't think that I came away that invested with it. Fair point. Mm. Fair point. But I thought it was a great idea, great concept. That, yeah. That, that, and, and I think it's going to do very well this award season as well. And of course, I, yeah. I loved the chemistry on screen between John David Washington and Adam Driver. Yes. That was, I mean, for me, that was the standout of the whole film, and like I said before, Adam Driver is just amazing in it. Yes, I think I think he was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's Black Klansman. I think we can both agree: good, bit slow, wouldn't rush to the cinema to see it again. Yeah, but worth a watch. Great watch. Yeah. yeah.